has has this kind of rise of real world evidence changed how you approach um, treatment at all? Has, has anything really stuck out to you or inspired you in the realm of real world evidence studies? Well, I, I think it's it's helped me in most instances, you know, confirm what we found in clinical trials. But there's also been situations where we have, you know, found differing results um, in a different uh, leukemia than I worked with in, in my E1910 trial called acute promyelocytic leukemia. And you know, we did a study where we advised uh, community oncologists um, in managing these patients with uh, called APL, acute promyelocytic leukemia. It's a very rare leukemia, so community oncologists don't see it very much. And um, the, a lot of the patients that we managed on that study, they came from the community and were not, uh, we didn't have specific eligibility criteria. And those patients wouldn't have been included in a lot of the clinical trials that we saw. Um, so and there's a, an early death rate with APL, unfortunately, that that is not taken into account in clinical trials. Mm -hmm. So that was an area where that was real, real eye opening, mm -hmm. you know, for me. Yeah, let let's talk a little bit about measurable residual disease assessment. That's becoming more central to risk stratification and management in ALL. For example, uh, how do you integrate MRD results into your treatment decisions, and are there challenges? What are the what are the challenges? Because I'm, I'm sure there are in standardizing MRD testing across institutions. Well, that is a challenge, uh, particularly with what's been the most common approach in the United States is flow cytometry, and that isn't, um, in adults, not well standardized uh, across different adult populations. Each institution has their own assay, and they haven't frequently been compared one to another. Uh, our pediatric colleagues have done a much better job with that. They're basically two labs in the United States, one on the West Coast, one on the East Coast, that do uh, the MRD testing by flow cytometry for the, uh, the children's oncology group. So they've standardized that, that assay. Um, so that's one of the challenges in adults is that the results haven't always been standardized. Now, there's another test, uh, next generation sequencing, which is a more sensitive test. We can pick up one in a million uh, leukemia cells, where with flow cytometry, we can pick up, you know, one in 10,000, maybe one to 100,000. Mm -hmm. And that assay, it's actually, that this NGS MRD assay has been, uh, it's commercialized. So there's a one company that does it in the United States. And so they've got it standardized. And that's actually becoming the gold standard, um, given its increased sensitivity and its ability to be standardized. But it does require getting a sample from the patient at diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can be from a, a bone marrow slide, so it doesn't have to be the day they have their diagnosis, but that sometimes can be a challenge. Mm. 